Hey guys, we've got five weeks until Mopar Sunday in Queensland, so it's the perfect time to drag out Dad's Ute. So for those that aren't familiar, this is my dad's ute. Now dad's been gone nine years now, as Facebook so eloquently reminded me this morning, it's almost nine years to the day. So he bought this ute quite a few years back. Um, he was never really a valiant guy. We grew up with Holdens, like HQs, HZs, all that sort of stuff. And then as I got into the valiants and that sort of thing as a cheap form of performance car, you know, he's kind of like, why are you wasting your money on these old Valiants and blah, blah, blah. He didn't really get it back then. But as I started to get into the whole publishing side of things, you know, with Street Commodores and Street Machine and all that, um, he really became a fan of what I was doing. I think he's quite proud in what I was doing. And then, of course, he ended up buying himself a couple of Valiants himself. And you know, I just, you know, he had this crazy old rusty convertible he used to drive around on the farm up there. And then, uh, you know, he bought this ute from... Harvey Bay in Queensland, which is remarkably rust-free for something up that part of the world. And he loved this ute. He really did love this ute. And we talked about doing a V8 swap on it. He's kind of like, he liked it. He loved it a lot. But he's kind of always talking about, oh, you know, how much would it be to put a 392? He actually said the words 392 Hemi. And I'm like, Dad, that's a lot of money, that's a big investment. But sure, we can do a V8 conversion on this thing, no worries. Then um, dad passed away, cancer, you know, 61 years old, just retired basically, and cancer, you know, seven months, diagnosis to death, basically. So that was a pretty tough time, and dad left this ute to me. Well, actually he left it, technically he left it to my son, Alex. Um, but as you people probably know, some of you all know Alex's story, Alex is wheelchair bound for life, we will never drive. So I'm kind of the caretaker of this ute. And uh, as part of that, you know, I figure I have done a V8 conversion to this already. I had a big block in there for a while. People that have watched Scotty's Garage would have seen me put a 361 cube big block Dodge motor in this. And that was a bit of fun, but it never really fit very well in terms of like, it was just such a big motor in such a tight engine bay. It was a nightmare to change plugs on and all that sort of stuff. It was just, it wasn't a really good fit for this ute. And then the engine had all sorts of balance problems and that sort of thing. So, you know, I pulled it out and while I've had all that reciprocating mass balance, they haven't put the engine back together and I haven't put it back in this car. But I figured, it probably could still benefit from a V8. And with Mopar Sunday coming up, and Dad used to love going to Mopar Sunday. This is the other part of the story. Dad lived up that way. So every time Mopar Sunday rolled around, Dad would drive the old ute up there. Even though it had a 225 slant six in it, he'd cruise on up there with his ute, proud as punch, and go and watch the drags and just be part of the whole thing, you know? And um, yeah, he really loved that event. So I figure, we're going to drop a V8 in this thing, cruise it 1,800 k's to Willowbank, race it, and uh, then drive it back. So I'm going to enlist Gus, Paul Cronin, or Gus as you guys know him, is going to make the road trip with us. We're going to get, head up with a couple of other mates like uh, Simon Truella and Dave Green, who you may remember from a cruise we did up way back with my Orange Valiant wagon. Same group of guys, we're going to cruise up together to Queensland. Hopefully it's going to be a, a less of a um, troublesome trip. We had a lot of trouble on that trip, but uh, hey, we're building this thing in five weeks, so maybe we'll have the same problems. I don't know. But anyway, so we're going to do a V8 conversion, get it registered, get it running and driving, do everything, and then drive it 1800 k's up there and then 1800 k's back. And in between, I want to run 12s at Willowbank. So excuse all the dust. I mean, the thing is looking pretty dusty and dirty. It does clean up quite nice. But as you can see, there is no engine in here at the moment. Now, the engine bay is pretty tidy other than under the bonnet here, and I will go 
I'm, I'm going to try and use some of that rust oiling rust dissolver on this under bonnet stuff see if we can clean this up and make it a lot nicer looking i already did the engine bay back when i did the big block conversion as you can see there's no big block in there now uh, it's also missing a master cylinder the brakes had a bit of an issue so we're going to do some brake upgrades to it in the in between all this sort of stuff as well uh, i'm hoping i have the right engine mounts i've got a set of engine mounts from tough mounts so we're going to do tough mounts on our engine i've got a brand new transmission in the back so this should all work pretty well i think it should be pretty straightforward it has had a v8 in here before so so all this uh, wiring and stuff should line up pretty well. Yeah, I think this will work. Let's go have a look at this engine. Ta-da! So here we have it. One Mopar small block. Now, this is a 318, all right? It's kind of the, uh, the 5.7 Hemi of its time. It's kind of, it was in everything Mopar made, basically. 318s came out in just about everything. So it doesn't get a lot of respect. You know, people always, when you're talking small block Mopars, it's like 340s, 360s. The 340s were always the race engine. You know, they were short stroke, big bore, and everyone had a lot of respect for the 340. It was one of the best small blocks ever made in that period. You know, like, and I compare that to the Chevys, Fords, whatever. 340s were heavily respected. 360s were pretty good. Longer stroke, slightly smaller bore than the 340, but they were a good solid thing. And again, you can make amazing power in them. And you know, with the stroker kits that are available these days, like we did our Dart, Dodge Dart giveaway car a few years back, and that Dart Swinger, we built up a stroker 360 for it. It made 530 horsepower, 530 foot pounds of torque, you know, hydraulic cam, small block, could drive that thing every day. It was a stout performer. So, they're a good thing. The 318 though, it don't get no respect. And uh, mainly because it's of compression issues, all right? So, these are 3.31 inch stroke, so same as a 340. The bore size is 3.91, so very similar to an LS1 V8, but um, the pistons are always down the bore. So right now, you can see these pistons are about 75 thou down the bore. So the compression ratio on this engine at the moment, I think, measures up with the heads we have at about 8.2 to 1. So, you know, great for a turbo, but we're not doing turbos, all right? This is dad's you know? We're not throwing turbos and superchargers at it. It's just going to be raw, naturally aspirated V8 grunt. So what we've got here is a 60 thou over 318, so it makes it 328 cubes. So it's only 12 cubes away from being a 340 anyway. And what we're gonna do is deck the, the, uh, the block, bring those pistons up to zero deck height, maybe take a little bit off the heads as well, and bring that comp up to maybe somewhere between 9.5 and 10 to one. Is, that's kind of where we're working with at the moment. So that is our plan. So we've got 318 there. It's kind of a, it has been built professionally. I built, I bought it as this, but it was built in the States. An importer brought it over. I've bought it off them, picked it up pretty cheap at the time. But, um, but yeah, it, uh, man, it's been sitting in a bag for 10 years. So it is dry as. Um, so I'm going to pull it down again go through it, have a look, make sure everything measures up the way it's supposed to, and just check that, you know, the, pist the bearings aren't really, really dry and that sort of thing. So we'll pull it apart, we will deck it. Um, we're gonna throw some good gear at it. Like, I don't know what this cam is in it. It's got a single row timing chain on it. So we don't know anything about this engine other than that's, you know, been rebuilt. One good thing though, Turn this over. Is that it is a later model 318. So it actually has the 360, 340 rods in it. So this has got the beefier rods from the later models in it. Um, that's a good thing. What I'm going to do is actually when I pull this apart, 
we're going to, I've got some rod bolts on the way, so we're going to do ARP rod bolts in it. Yes, we're getting the rods resized this time because they are that style of rod bolt. So, ARP rod bolts, uh, it's got good rods in it. Pistons are only cast, but, you know, we're not throwing any boost at it, so I think the cast pistons will do just fine. Uh, double row timing chaining will be going on the front. You know, we've got some good gear on its way from Summit Racing right now. But we also have a massive pile, you may have noticed, of Edelbrock gear back here. So let's have a look. All right, brand new set of Felpro gaskets, but Edelbrock has also sent us some gaskets as part of their top end power package. All right, so this is a package that Edelbrock puts together that basically says, we've tested this package on an engine of your type and it made this much power. So if you put it on your engine with those same specs, it should make that much power. So they put this on a 340, 9.5 to 1 comp, 340, and it made 417 horsepower. That's not too bad. So that's these heads, 63cc combustion chamber, this camshaft, 234, 244 at 50 with just over 500 thou lift, like um, 512, something like that. I can actually pull the specs out in a sec. Uh, there's a Dizzy there from Max Fire, which is a Edelbrock performance brand. We've got a brand new Carby there, we've got a brand new water pump, valve covers, air cleaner, RPM air gap intake, high flow fuel pump, all the gear there from Edelbrock, ready to rock as a package. That'll go on that engine. And hopefully we'll see somewhere up around that high 300, maybe 400 horsepower territory. That would be amazing. But because we're dealing with something that's slightly smaller cubes, all right, so 328 cubes rather than 340, I think it will be slightly revier. So we're gonna see maximum power somewhere around the six and a half thousand RPM mark. You know, we may have to spin it to seven grand to get the best out of it on the track, which is why I'm putting ARP rod bolts in that thing. So with them, that sort of RPM, yeah, we're gonna need, you know, some good bits and pieces in this thing just to support it. So like I said, I've got a whole bunch of stuff coming from Summit in the States. It should be, it's already here in Australia. It should be here in the next day or two on our doorstep. And uh, we're gonna start pulling this apart. But first, what I wanna do is put our engine mounts on it, and sit the thing in the engine bay, and make sure that our engine mounts are right. Because Jason wasn't sure, Jason Way from Tough Mounts, wasn't sure that the mounts that we had were specifically correct for our setup. So he wanted us to test them. So we're gonna test them, make sure they're right. We have some tough mounts here. Now these are for a VC V8 into slant 6K frame. Now we have a slant 6K frame in this car, but it is a VE model, so the year after. So we have these tough mounts here. We're gonna bolt them to our block. I have to go get some bolts. Bolt them to our block and we'll sit it in there and see if it lines up. And if it lines up, happy days. And Jason will be happy because then he can say to people confidently, that they will fit VE as well. But anyway, let's give them a ball. So we just ducked down to Bunnings, grabbed some high tensile bolts. Unfortunately, it is a public holiday today, so Bunnings is the only place open. That's all right. Grab these bolts, whack them in.
So some people might say that we should, uh, you know, disassemble the engine to do all this, and that is the plan, you know. I am going to pull this engine down. Um, but I want to do, like, I did a, a sort of semi-official check of the deck height, and it came up as 75 thou down, but that was just with some feeler gauges and a straight edge. I am getting a deck bridge tomorrow. So I've got to put a deck bridge across there with a dial gauge and we'll work out precisely how far the pistons are down the bore. And uh, yeah, basically we'll work out how much we have to deck this block. In the meantime though, I need to know that these mounts are right. First we'll drop the engine in with the mounts, bang. And then uh, if that all looks kosher, I will bolt the transmission to the back of this thing and then we'll put it in again with the trans and make sure it is 100%. So I'm just going to leave the engine stand component on there at the moment because it's not going to cause us any dramas. And if it's wrong, I don't want to go to the trouble of having to bolt all that up again. So it can sit on there for a moment. So it does turn out it's going to cause us some drama. So what I'll do is I'll just lift it out a little bit, won't come out all the way. And just zap that off and then we'll try again. So it looks like it fits. So these are, like I said before, the VC engine mounts. This is a VE, year model after. Totally different K-frame situation, but it looks like it all fits. The real test will be when we bolt a transmission to that thing, and I have a brand new one sitting in the back. But the real, real test will be when we bolt up the heads and they've shiny new pacemaker headers in the back. So hopefully the shiny pacemakers fit with all this other stuff that we've got going on. So. None of this stuff was meant to actually bolt together. You know, the pacemakers are for this model car, but I don't think they've evolved up with this style of engine mount in this car. So hopefully it all kind of works. We can't test the pacemakers today because that means we've got to put the heads on the engine, but it also means we have to cut away part of the exhaust system because it has, you know, twin exhaust already for the, uh, the V8 that was there before. We have to shorten them up a bit so we can get the pacemakers in position. We'll do that another day, but Let's see if the engine and auto fit in there together. So, we have a shiny new transmission there. Again, I've had this for a while, had it probably as long as I've had that engine. Now this, for Chrysler fans, you'll look at it and go, that's a 904. Well, you'd be wrong. It's actually what they call a triple nine. So, triple nine is basically a 904 with low first gear, extra clutch packs, so they're a bit stronger. They generally use them behind, you know, 360s and things in trucks. So they're a pretty solid little transmission. And they also have a lockup converter, which is a good and a bad thing. So the lockup converter setup means you have to use a unique torque converter, which, luckily enough, we have one there. 
Now just looking at that, it doesn't have any balance weights on it, so it tells me it probably wasn't behind a 360, it might have been a 318 a truck. So that's good, I don't have to count, cut any balance weights off there. But it also has a little switch down the back here, which means I can engage the lockup. So on the highway, we can go down the highway, drive along, hit lockup, and it'll be just as economical as if it was a manual in top gear type thing. So we should get pretty good economy on the highway, I'm hoping. But I may have to send that converter off to TCE, see if they can get a bit more stall speed out of it. Because with our camshaft in this little cube engine, it's going to need some sort of stall speed to get it off the line. Otherwise, you're going to be a bit of a slug out of the hole. So all these things that we need to consider when you're mixing your matching parts. So right now, though, we need to get this behind that engine, drop it in the engine bay, see if it all fits together. So I'm just going to slip the converter out and we'll show you what we're talking about. So on the outside that looks like a fairly standard sort of 904 converter but if you look here on the input shaft of the transmission you'll notice it's hollow. Now normally a 904 is not hollow so when they're hollow like that it indicates they're a lockup transmission. So a lot of people don't like the lockup transmissions. I'm kind of keen to see how it all goes because you know I've never had one, and uh, I think with a you know a little bit of stall speed, we should be able to get away with at least a little bit of stall speed out of this. I think, and then um, you know with a lockup on the freeway, yeah, you hit that switch. We'll just have like a you know switch on the dash or something like that. Get on the freeway, hit the switch, lock it up, be fine. And then when you hit the off ramp, you just you know. Flick the switch off, go back into normal mode. Should be all good. Should be very interesting to see how it all goes anyway. But I'll pull the converter out, just make this whole setup a little bit lighter for bolting it to the engine anyway. And then like I said, we can you know, possibly send this off to TCE and they can have a look inside and see if they can uh, get some more stall speed out of it. So if they can get it up to the uh, two and a half, 2800, that'd be great on this body. Uh, if they have to change bodies, then we're going to lose all our lockup and stuff. So we don't really want to go down that road. I want to keep the lockup while I can, because if I lose the lockup there, then we have to deal with it there as well. So might as well keep it all happening. Now for the real test. We're going to uh, drop this engine and trans in. If everything comes up perfect, then we know we are good to go. Wouldn't you know it, there's enough trans fluid in there to uh, leak out the Speedo cable hole. Son of a biscuit. So we ran into a bit of problem. I uh, stupidly hung the chain off the back of the bell housing. Thought there'd be enough room. No, there's not. The clearances are that tight there that, uh, yeah, the chain is actually stopping us from getting this engine box all the way in. So what I'm going to do is just drop it down in place, take the slack off the chain, undo the bolt from the back of the bell housing. Okay, so we got that bolt out. Now, there are no other holes 
that I can use other than a head bolt hole, which I really don't want to use, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I have this nice shiny new ARP head bolt, which I also really don't want to use. And I can hear you all screaming at me, Scotty, don't do it. Don't use that head bolt because you won't be able to use it again. Of course, we won't be able to use it again because this using it in this situation is going to bend it. However, I have more head bolts than I need because Edelbrock have sent me a whole ARP head bolt kit. And then with each head, they give you an extra head bolt that has to be used in a certain location with their head. So given that I have an extra head bolt for each side, I can get away with doing this and sacrificing a head bolt. <sighs> like I say, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So we finally have the engine in the car and that was a bit of a Scotty RTFM problem. Read the fucking manual. So I didn't read the instructions and uh, basically because the, our tough mounts came unpainted and that's the way we needed them just in case we had to modify them, you know, because we didn't know they were going to fit. Well, they fit. However, because they're unpainted, there's no stickers. So when you fit tough mounts, it's stickers to the front, but also bolt heads to the front. Now we have one of the bolt heads backwards and uh, that was causing us all sorts of problems in the alignment of the engine and the trans. So engine alone, no problems. Put a trans on there and then it becomes a problem. Now we have the mounts all the right way around and it is all sitting there perfectly. So this is gonna work. Pretty confidently, this is going to work. So happy with that. <sighs> you know, now we've just got to pull it all out again and then that engine tomorrow will get pulled down. But you're going to see all that on a future episode of Carnage.